Good evening, everybody. Nice to see such a big crowd. Um, I just thought that I see there's a lot of questions coming in and a lot of um, a lot of uh, confusion about the nine days getting mixed up with the three weeks and with Sir Saimer and uh, Avelos and all kinds of things. So I just thought it'd be a good idea to just um, really just go through the kitzer, the halachas, just the general ideas. And then if you have a particular question or something, maybe just uh, jot it down and I'm happy to leave some time at the end to see if I can help. Um, want to share um, just, a, just a thought before we start with the halachas. Um, so a little bit Kabbalistic, but very, very practical. But the, um, in this, the probably the earliest Kabbalah Sefer that we know about is um, is the Sefer Ayitzira. And the Sefer Ayitzira goes back to maybe Avram Avinu, maybe Gan Eden, maybe to the Tanoim, but it's an old Sefer. And the, one of the things that's done in the Sefer Ayitzira is, is that he puts a different midah, a different character trait, um, which is its tikkun takes place in a certain month. And he speaks about every month, what the tikkun of that month is, matches it up to the different names of the months, etc. But I just want to focus on where we are right now, Rosh Chodesh Av. Um, and there the Sefer Yitzira says something very, very interesting. It says that um, Tammuz, which is what we've ended today, is the month where uh, the tikkun is the tikkun of Re'iya, of sight. And of where we are now, tonight, is the tikkun of Shmiya, of hearing. How does that work out? It works out as follows, that um, the whole Tisha B'Av started all nine days started, Tisha B'Av started um, with the Miraglim. So the Miraglim went to Yisrael, came back with a bad report, um, divided into two. What happened in the month of Tammuz is they went and they saw Eretz Yisrael in the wrong light. What happened in the month of Av was they told it over to the Jewish people and we listened. And what's 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 interesting about it is that um, what, what the Miraglim were, were violating was their re'iyah. In other words, you come into Eretz Yisrael, like all of us, when you come into Eretz Yisrael. So, you know, you could see good, you could see bad. And, uh, you know, it's from Shavas or Batamos, it's so important to have an eye in Tova in Arizona, on Eretz Yisrael. Not just Shavas or Batamos, but all the time. But that's the month of Tikkun, Shavas or Batamos. The Miraglim were sent to Eretz Yisrael to see Eretz Yisrael and to make that tikkun. Um, the month of Av is the month of Shmia. That's when we heard. And you, you could see what you want. You could see good. You could see bad. And you could even hear what you want, hear good, hear bad. That's, you know, two people hear something and they both hear something different. Two people see something, they both see something different. So um, what we're involved with in Av, and it's just good, it's nice to know as a sort of an overview of everything, is in the Tikkun of Shmia. And I, I think what that means is that just like we have to be able to see good when it comes to nine days starting now, to put a special emphasis on being able to hear good. Um, you know, obviously, you know, you have to be careful what you listen to in terms of uh, you know, Lashon Hara and Motzi Shemra, and uh, listening is just as bad as saying, you know. But, um, you know, you see that there's this issue to listen to music. Um, the the Shmiya is to try to hear the good in what people are saying. That's the uh, the point here, to hear the good in, in, um, in the news. That's a tough one. Hear the good in the news. Try to hear good. And I think that's um, like a good backdrop for everything that were, um, I'll tell you something just very interesting before I get to the halachas, that there's a difference between in this, there's a difference between the uh, the harbin bais rish and the harbin bais sheni. They both happened on Tisha B'Av. The first base of mikdash was destroyed, and the second base of mikdash was destroyed. When the first base of mikdash was destroyed, we lost nevua. No more prophets. Once the base of mikdash was destroyed, the bais rish there was no more prophets. 
There was Yechezkel, went for a short time after. That was a gift that Hashem gave us. But basically, the concept of Nevoah um, ended. Um, and when the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed, the Beis Shemi, when the second Beis HaMikdash was destroyed, that was um, the time of the growth of the, or, or the, 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 the canonization of Tor Shabbal Peh, that which we hear, Toshma. I was canonized by Rabbi Yehuda Anasi. And it's interesting that Nevoah is Chazoin Yeshayahu. Nevoah was always about what they saw. They saw it in a dream. Moshe Rabbeinu saw it by Spaklaria Meirio. Saw a very clear vision. Um, but the, 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 the Talmudic time of the Bayashani was all about what we heard, what we were able to be macabre from our teachers. We were able to give what we were able to. It was all about hearing. So we're in hearing mode now, so thank you for listening. Okay. Okay, let's, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump through a number of halachas. And as I say, if there's a question, maybe just not to uh, make a balagan here on the, on the uh, Zoom group, just uh, let's leave some time at the end. Um, some halachas for the nine days. Number one, Shulchan Aruch says that when the nine days come, there's really three things that are happening. Um, one of them is it's a, a bad luck time. <laughs> just hasn't been good for the Jewish people. And therefore, if you're going to do something like um, you have a court case with a non-Jew, why do I say non-Jew? Because if you have a court case with a Jew, you're even. But if you have a court case with a non-Jew, this is not a lucky time for the Jewish people. Shulchan Aruch says try to stay away if you can postpone it for later. Um, doing dangerous things, uh, dangerous trips, jumping out of airplanes, things like that. Um, time of Sakhan, I would say that you know, even now, um, you know, with this whole, with the whole corona thing, um, you know, just try to stay away from Sakana a little bit more, a little bit more. Um, unless it's the Dvar Mitzvah, um, don't party too much. Um, and the third thing is that it's um, Avelos for the Beis HaMikdash. And it, besides for not being a good luck time and being a bit of a, well, therefore a dangerous time, there's Avelos for the Beis HaMikdash and what that comes down to is two things. That's our one, two, three. One of them is um, we don't do things which have a lot of simcha to it. And we do, but besides for that, we don't do things which we did in the Beis HaMikdash, and therefore we can't do it. Example is eat meat. All, all the carbonates, the reason why we don't eat meat is not because it makes you happy and not because it's dangerous, even though I know some of you sitting on that screen think it's dangerous to eat meat. But it's, it's not why we're not allowed to eat it during the nine days. The reason why we're not allowed to eat meat during the nine days is simply because um, it's, a, it's a way of remembering that we can't bring carbonus any longer. That's what that's all about. So um, it's important to keep these things in mind. In terms of Avelus, very similar to the laws of Schleichen, if God forbid somebody's a novel. So we all know this. You can't, you can't wear new clothes. You can't wear freshly laundered clothes. Um, let me give you a little insight into that, if I may. Um, it's, it's not about wearing new clothes. That's not, what, that's not what it's about. It's not about wearing clean clothes. What it's about is that the, 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 at the time of the Harbin Beis HaMikdash, the Jewish people took upon themselves to keep the clothes they were wearing on for the nine days until Tisha B'Av. Now, obviously, that was much more plausible, you know, in, 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 in the time, of, in the, you know, 2,000 years ago than it is now. But that was the idea. The idea was that for these nine days, concentrate on the base of Mikdash. Don't change your clothes. It's a subtlety that I'm saying because the way we look at it now is you're not allowed to, um, you know, are you allowed to wear a clean shirt? Are you allowed to wash your shirt? It's not really the point. I mean, of course, there's halachas about that, which we'll discuss for a moment. But what the real din is that we're supposed to not have that luxury of, you know, we change. Um, what happened um, at the time, and certainly more and more over the years, and this is something that has changed over the years, I've seen it even in my lifetime, is we've become more and more istinous. Istinous is particular, more and more finicky about the way we feel and the way we dress. 
So we're, and also, by the way, we dress differently. I, um, I don't think that, uh, you know, the people of Rabbi Akiva, you know, probably didn't wear like, you know, a suit and a tie and a jacket the way I dress. Uh, you know, I probably dress more comfortably for the Middle East <laughs> than, than, than we do. So um, the styles changed and our, our temperament changed. You know, I, was, I, I always make this point that, you know, when I was a yeshiva bacher here in uh, Yerushalayim, um, who had air conditioning? Who'd ever even heard of air conditioning? Yeshiva didn't have air conditioning. So maybe if you went to a hotel or something, they had air conditioning. There was really no such thing. And nobody thought about it. But go think about getting through the day today without air conditioning. It's like worse than tissue bar, you know? So uh, our, something has changed. Our, the way we dress has changed. Things have changed. So even though the original concept was just st stay in your clothes, like stay where you are, stand still. The world stands still when Jerusalem was destroyed. So stand still. Don't keep on changing. Don't keep on. Um, but then we became Istanis, and it became, and here's the halachic point. It wasn't so much a matter of us violating the Avelos. It's that it was, an, it, was a, um, it, it, was, it was not something which was possible any longer. Uh, today, many people can't go nine days without a shower, or seven days without a shower, or one day without a shower. Uh, people can't go nine days without clothes, changing your clothes. So our whole our whole matzav today is a matzav of istanis. I was talking to somebody a couple of weeks ago, a guy in America, from guy, good guy, and he was telling me that um, he um, he's a lawyer. He changes his shirt um, four times a day. <laughs> so you know, it, it just that's that's his that's his temperament. So he was asking me, like, what's going to happen on the nine days? Is he allowed to change his shirt four times a day? I said, listen, try to cut it down to two. <laughs> try to cut it down to two. But, you know, it's everybody, Basher Hu Adam, you know, everybody, what he is. The idea here is not so much to suffer. It's really not the point. The, the idea here is to, is to feel um, the loss in the world of Yerushalayim. And these were different things that we've done. So that's in terms of Levisha. What came out from that in Shulchan Aruch is the idea of kibbutz. Like, don't luxuriate in laundering. Remember the laundering at one point meant going to the seashore or to the well and scrubbing. And, and uh, when you came out with clean clothes, it was ooh la la. You know, you had, you had some kind of clean, clean clothes there. Um, it's not the same thing today either. I'm not pushing away the halachas, by the way, God forbid, I'm, I'm, I keep them. But um, it's, it's not the same thing to throw something in the machine and then to the dryer, and somehow when, you're, you know, when your shirt comes out or your underwear comes out, it's not like, well, let's make a kiddush. You know, it's not, it's, not that, um, it's not that type of a thing. There was a laundry day, and it was a big deal. So um, we, the, the halachas of that have also changed somewhat, in, in, um, in that it's just not the same kind of, I'll tell you how that's changed, is the poskim say Rebbe Yashav writes about this, that um, that he thinks that for children, um, the the way laundry is done today, um, there is no prohibition. Certainly no prohibition to do laundry for little children, um, but uh, even to do laundry for for um, up to nine years old, um, Rebbe Yashav said it wasn't a problem. I have a couple of, of Scheinberg. He said to try not to do it, but I'm just telling you that there's there's uh, such a hatter. But his reasoning was because it's a washer and a dryer and, and it's a kid. So there's no great um, you know, festive, festival going on because you've done, because you've done the, the you, you changed the little, you know, you'd wash the little kid's clothes. So we, we stay away from it. What's clearly us here though, is to do things which does give us simcha. That would mean professionally dry cleaning something or cleaning something in your own washer and dryer and ironing it or folding it really well. So the way to do it is, this is the halachas, it says in Shulchan Aruch, that let's say you only have one garment. That's not the case with anybody here tonight. But let's say you have only one garment. So then you're allowed to wash it because that's not a matter of um, luxuriating anything. However, you, shouldn't, um, you still shouldn't press it and take such good care of it. Put it on the side, wash it, put it on the side, and, and, and put it on. So my, my um, very practical advice is, like, tone it down. Uh, you know, if you can go without the laundry, you can go without the change, do it. 
But let's be realistic that we, we are all in this generation is to this. So what, what it says in Shulchan Aruch, that if you only had one baguette, with the translation for us in 2020, is if you, let's say, you only have four begotten. So I can't live with four shirts. My friend needs 20 shirts. So let's say you, can only, you can't live with four shirts. So that's the same thing as in the time of Shulchan Aruch of having only one shirt. I'll tell you something else. Here, that if you look at the post skin, um, there's a very, very big difference in halacha between the um, Eastern European poskim and the Sephardic poskim, um, as far as laundering and showering go or bathing goes. And the reason is really very simple, um, it's just a different climate completely. Uh, so what was possible in uh, Eastern Europe, in Poland or wherever it was, um, is really sometimes impossible if you're living in, in Yemen. Um, or, or in Israel or Beit Shabbash. So um, this, this is a bit of a um, you know, subjective idea. And what we all need to do here tonight is figure out personally, um, are we, in, and you got to be very honest about this, are we in Istanis and to what degree are we in Istanis? That's the big thing. To what degree are we in Istanis? Think to yourself, you know, what do we have to do? What do we not have to do? Um, is there any questions on that before I go further? Okay, then I'll go further. Um, there's, there's a... Sha sh Rabbi Shari is definitely out now until after, after Tishaba. No, I didn't say that. Um, I said that showering, it depends how much of an istinus you are. Um, and if you're feeling, let me, let me give you a rule of thumb. If you're showering to feel good, it's usher until after Tisha B'Av. If you're showering because you feel really, really lousy, so then um, you're allowed to you're allowed to bathe, panav yadav raglov. You're allowed to bathe in warm water, not in real hot water, and parts of your body. Um, if it's for a dvar mitzvah, which means lekavet shabbos, or if a woman has to go to the mikvah, so then bathing is mutter. So what you're not allowed to do in any under any circumstances is luxuriate in the water or luxuriate luxuriate in the pool. You see, people people go swimming all day long. People are calling me. Can my kids go swimming? You know, I get it. <laughs> it's, it's it's very hot outside. The kids are not in camp the way they normally are, or in school the way they normally are. It's, it's a, we're going through a very difficult time here, and like the only thing to do is be in the pool. So the answer is it's also to be in the pool. Um, this is this is it's an, it's also to be in the pool. It's an iser rechitza. Um, however, the iser only really begins halachically from a katan hayudei alisabel, which is nine years old and up. So if a, if a child is under nine, and what I should say, yeah, under nine, meaning one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, so then they're allowed to be in the pool. Now the Mishnah Bura says. You know, maybe it's better that kids shouldn't do rechitza, even if they're young kids, just as chinuch. But, you know, um, you know, these days, today, it's not so simple. Can we go back to laundry in regards to um, soiled towels uh, and wet towels? There's, there's no difference between um, towels, sheets, or shirts. It's the same halacha, exactly. Um, so what that means is that it all and it's, tablecloths. It's, and tablecloths. Thank you. Um, it's it's all the it's all the same. Um, ever, they're asking me that everyone should mute themselves. I'm not hearing any noise except for me. But okay. um, it's it's all the same thing. Meaning, the right thing would have been to do to um, schmutz it up a little bit today. Um, if you can't, if you didn't do that, or you couldn't do that, or for whatever reason. So um, same thing. You don't put on clean unless. The other one is completely soiled. Like, in other words, once something is unusable, there's no mitzvah here to use something which is unusable. I hope I'm being clear. This is a very fine distinction, which is usually talked about when you're learning Mishnah Bura. But I know that this is a sophisticated group. So I just want to make this distinction between removing the bad and creating something good. Like, think of it as a scale of positive and negative. So adding something good is not in the spirit or the halach of the nine days. Removing something bad. So if I've got a spot here on my shirt, I'm allowed to wash it off. I'm not to walk around with a spot on my shirt. 
Um, if I just feel like I want to freshen up a little bit, that's what we're being asked not to do. Um, next case. Um, oh, uh, Rabbi Haber, um, the Rav mentioned um, pressing. What about light ironing? Not like really being mock Pete's super great job. It's completely us, sir. It's completely us, sir. Put the iron away. Um, you know, the, the Shulchan Aruch says, Matzniyanus hasakin. You put away the Shulchan knife during the nine days because you don't need meat. Put away the iron. Um, there, there's there's no need for it. It's uh, it, Today, anyways, everything is, uh, you know, wrinkle free. Uh, the contrary. Um, are, you allowed to, are you allowed to, like, hang it in the shower or something? Yes, like, so yes. Like, so that's, that? you're, allowed to take, you're allowed to take away the bad wrinkles in a way that's not called kibos. So hanging it in the shower and steam or hanging it bachal is, uh, is, is mutter. Let me go to the next thing. Um, building. Yes. Istinus. You don't speak Greek? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> istinus. Um, you know, by, by the way, the word istinus is the same word as, is a, a big word for the for Tisha B'Av. Istinus is the same word as asya. Yasi, what does asya mean? Asya, asya means those that are were, were uh, healers, medical people, people that made you feel good. Um, that's what istinus is a person who like needs to feel good. Um, which, yeah, if you know, if you you know, people can't deal with it. You know, so that's an istinus. You can't deal with it. But you don't. I don't there's no such thing as sending something to the dry cleaner because you can't deal with it. You know, live with it. Deal with it. There's no such thing as ironing if you can't deal with it. I want to go to the next thing that people have been asking all day. Uh, by the way, since people have been asking all day, which I love, don't don't stop asking. But I decided it was easier to just talk to 100 people at a time. Um, I'm remodeling. That's a big one. Um, a lot of people are, you know, it's a season to to paint in your house. I don't know why this is exactly the season, but it's the summer. Uh, paint in your house. Somebody today wanted to repaint their pergola. Um, somebody, um, it was, was said that they're, they're, they've been saving up, they have their kids home now so they can help them paint all those kind of things. And decorating in general is us or during the nine days. The only heter is for any kind of building, I'm making a big broad swoop here, any kind of building, any kind of decorating, any kind of painting. Um, the heter is if you need to do it to live, that's one. Meaning I don't have a place to live, so I got <laughs> and I can't live in the house the way it is. Or if you have something going on in your house, which is just unlivable, like a leak in your living room, um, or something like that. So generally speaking, uh, the, the Rabbi Yashiv in his country says that you're allowed to do all plumbing. You're allowed to do all in the in the wall electrical work. Those are all things that are mutter, and you're allowed to do anything which is fixing bechal. Fix it, fix it work is mutter. It, what's usher is to make, to beautify and to handle. So let's say somebody says, I want to build a new um, a new room in my house. I'd like to have a new room. It's the wrong time. Let's say you, uh, you can't do that. You want to build a new pergola. It's the wrong time. You want to make your a certain room livable because you have people or because you don't have enough room. That's, that's mutter. Um, almost in all cases, gardening is usher. Um, unless something is mamish going to die. This is what the Gemara calls Natiya Shal Simcha. Like most of our gardens are, are for, also for um, the purpose of beautification and they make us happy. Um, so you're not, allowed, you're, not, you're not obligated or even allowed to let things die. You have to give it the amount of water that it needs. But when you start doing landscaping and these things, that's us that's or to do. Also in the nine days, in Shulchan Aruch, ain night in the in these nine days. Before I go further from building and gardening, any questions on that? Anybody have any particular issues? Pressure space bar. Okay. And what uh, what by buying furniture for a rental is going to be uh, available after the nine days, right after? You're not buying what? I didn't hear what you said. Buying what? Furniture for a rental property that needs to be available a week after the nine days. Um, it's us to buy things even if it's for after the nine days. However, um, for Parnassa, you're allowed to buy things. Let's say you have a store. You're allowed to buy and sell. So, um, you know, yeah, if, you, if, you're, if you're in that business, so you're in that business. So generally speaking, 
anything um, that's for business is mutter. I see um, Randy's here. Is that you? On the, on the, yeah, so you're allowed to fix everything for people. Why? Because that's your parnasa. And maybe you'll say to your to the people, let the um, you know lufnei iver loisitin michshal. I'm not allowed to do it. So let me say like this. First of all, for svardim, it's not usher at all until Sunday. Um, and even for Ashkenazim, there's no isser of lifnei for for in a drabana, which is this. So um, so you can tell them to ask their rabbi. You don't have to paskin, but if they're you, it's parnasa, I presume, or for anybody here that's parnasa, just happen to see you, your smile. So it becomes um, it becomes mutter to do. Um, we don't drink wine during the nine days. The reason we don't drink wine during the nine days, an oval can drink wine. Why don't we drink wine during the nine days? Because we used wine in the karbanos in the Beis HaMikdash. And this is very, very important. Um, and that the Isser is not coming from Avelos, or it's not because you're going to get like tipsy and you're going to be too happy. Um, it's because they used it in the Beis HaMikdash. Nisu Chayayim. Nafkamina is that you are allowed to drink beer, whiskey, cognac, um, martinis, Manhattans, whatever you're into, um, you're allowed to drink it because there's no issue, they, because all those things couldn't be used in the Korbanos in the base of Migdash, so there's no prohibition to begin with. Finish, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I mean, other than, unless you have a problem with addiction, alcoholism, and things like that. But I mean, in terms of the halacha of the nine days, this is this is not a problem at all. Wine is us here. Um, uh, Rav Scheinberg told us, that um, there's no issue of drinking grape juice during the nine days. And the reason is because grape juice is not usable um, in the um, in the, in the base of Mikdash. Uh, I, I will tell you that um, many, many Poiskim um, argue argue with Rav Scheinberg on that one. And I can remember there was this very hush of a Rav who used to come to the Mishnah Burish here. And Rav Scheinberg said, grape juice is mutter during the nine days. And, um, and therefore, he said, all this big issue about the uh, Havdalah and who should drink the wine from Havdalah and should you give it to a cotton, that's because they didn't have grape juice. Uh, grape juice was not a common thing um, before Manashevitz. That's why that was a big um, a big issue. Drink grape juice and you don't have any problems at all. So um, I remember there was a very hush of a rov that used to come every day to the shir. Today is one of the biggest poskim. And I, he was he sat respectfully always by... Rav Scheinberg, when it came to that sock of you can drink grape juice in the nine days, he says, no, 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 no grape juice. So it was, a, it was an interesting, he says, you can drink grape juice. So I'm going with my Rebbe that you could drink grape juice during the nine days. There's nothing wrong with it. And that, while I'm here, is what you should do for um, Havdalah. Have some grape juice. Um, if you're um, pre-diabetes or diabetic and you're not supposed to drink grape juice, so give it to your wife to drink. But the, um, but the thing is that um, wine um, is a big bidiyeved, wine, real wine, wine meaning something which has already developed an alcoholic aspect to it, um, and that's usser during the nine days. But again, what's to remember is that it's not a velus, it's based on mikdash. I presume there's no questions on that unless there are any questions on that. Yeah, because you said the wine issue, oh. issue because based on mikdash. Earlier you said the same thing about meat. Exactly. If that's the case, then why is chicken... Uh, we think chicken is not part of the avoda. Correct, correct. And in, indeed, Rav David, chicken is a much better deal than meat. But the Paiskim say like this, in, uh, that being that chicken took on a din of meat, rilagabe, milchiks, and fleshiks, so therefore we're machmer on chicken also. And the Paiskim even want to know maybe fish? Fish, no. So you're right. The, the chicken thing is a, is a, a chumr that we keep and we should keep. But I can tell you that a number of people have called and said that they're lactose intolerant and it's impossible for them um, or their kids not to eat uh, flashix at all. You know, what are they going to eat? They can't eat milchix, they can't eat flashix. What are they going to eat? Um, you know, there's only so far some people could go with beans, right? So, um, right. So, but for most people that they're not used to that, um, so my, my answer to them is to cut it down to what is as little as you can and to eat chicken. Um, and that Eitz has brought, Ramosha Feinstein says that, and uh, Rav Schechter, I believe, writes that in one of his um, Svarm. Um, so that's that's probably you published of it. So um, that's that's something which is a kula, which you should do if you need to do it for some reason medically or nutritionally, like you really need to do it. 
I mean, people argue that there's no need for meat altogether these days. There's no need for, for protein. Um, if I, I have think a, you mentioned Shabbos in the course of this, but uh, it, I assume that none of these apply to Shabbos, correct? None of this applies on Shabbos. Shabbos, your meals are Sudas Mitzvah. So it's the same thing um, if you have a, um, a Shabbos meal, if you have a Siyum, if you have a Bris, um, anything which is a Sudas Mitzvah, you're not eating it to luxuriate. You're eating it to, to, to do a Mitzvah. And that right away becomes uh, becomes not just mutter, but you know, according to the Hasidim, you should try to find a, a, a sudas mitzvah to eat from, if you can. Jo go join a siyum, and the reason for that is because they say that you're bringing light into darkness, and that's a good thing to do. So the the, the Hasidim, when I went, I went to Camp Gan Yisrael um, with the Lubavitchers, and they every night was a siyum, sometimes two, three times a day. Um, they had more flay. That's the only time they had flayshiks the whole summer. Rabbi, does that include Suda Shlishit? Do you have good meat for Suda Shlishit? Absolutely. And uh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you more than that. Malava Malka is also a uh, Suda Mitzvah. But the, th the thing with Malava Malka is it's only if you're Makhbit to eat Malava Malka every week. Same thing with Rosh Chodesh, by the way. Tonight and tomorrow, me and I'll eat meat. Me and I'll drink wine. So somebody says, but I have a big suda every Rosh Chodesh. I wash, I have steak, I have meat. So then the post can say, you don't have to break that minig, and you're allowed to have meat during on Rosh Chodesh also. But for the rest of us that don't really have a special suda's baser on Rosh Chodesh or Malava Malka, so you have to be mm -hmm. machmir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's... Only like what Rav Scheinberg during, uh, during the nine days and during mm -hmm. the grape juice. Does that mean I shouldn't be making kiddush on uh, grape juice during the year? Um, no, because you don't have to make Kiddush on something which they use in the Beis HaMikdash. The, the, din of, the din of Kiddush is a completely different din. That's a din of using the, 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 something which is Chashev. And if grape juice is a Hamar Medina, and it's the Nusach of the Bracha to make a Bar Priyagafen, so which is the Nusach, you're supposed to make a Bar Priyagafen, so you can make grape juice. Um, you can make Kiddush on grape juice. But it has, that's not, you, you don't make Kiddush because we did Nisuch Hayayin in the base of Mikdash, yeah? It's not, that's not what it's all about. What about, what about if one eats small milk every week, but not necessarily Flesheks? Then you're not allowed to eat Flesheks this year either, this week either. Um, but Weber, are there post game who say that there is a preference to make Havdalah on wine, in particular, the, the Gra, the, the Chazan Ish, um, it's, it, it, it could be a Chumrah according to the Gra, but it's not a Chumrah you should keep this year because this year the Poskim are saying to give it to your child. I'm talking about in the time of the Shulchan Aruch. Give it to a child, give it to a cotton. So the, 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 in my opinion, the easiest and the best case scenario would be to make it on, uh, on grape juice, to, give, to make it on wine and then either drink it or give it to somebody else to drink. You're right away walking into a Bidiyavid, which is unnecessary. By the way, Habdallah, just while we're here, Hilchus Habdallah, is not a din in wine altogether. Din Abdullah is a din in Hamar Medina. So Hamar Medina, what's Hamar Medina? Hamar Medina, it's hard to define, and every posik has a different definition of Hamar Medina, but the, the pshat in Hamar Medina is something which you would, um, it's a fancy thing, like, you know, like if, let's say you go out for drinks. So if you go out for drinks, you don't go to the thing and, you know, you go to a bar, you don't go order water, or if you're having a cocktail party, you know, you don't you don't give seven up. So um, so if it is Hamar Medina, uh, you know, when you know, I go back to my uh, time with Rav Scheinberg again. At that time, they had just, believe it or not, introduced Coca-Cola to Eretz Yisrael. So that was like considered a, a big luxury issue. I haven't touched this stuff in years, but I'm saying it was a big luxury item at that time, Coca-Cola. And the reason was because of a, a, a political problem that the Arabs at that time said, that if you sell Israel Coca-Cola, we're not going to buy it. So they made their choices. Um, and, I, and for years and years and years, finally they negotiated the Coca-Cola, but there was no Pepsi. But the, what I'm, the reason I'm mentioning this uh, bit of political history is because that right away made Coke in Israel Hamar Medina. <laughs> like, like, whoa, he's got Coke. You know, and it's, uh, whereas, you know, in America, people have been guzzling this down since the 1920s. Like it's nothing. It was like water. So in Eretz Yisrael, it became Hamar Medina. Is orange juice Hamar Medina? I'm not sure. 
They have orange juice as chamar medina or apple juice. I mean, frappuccino. Frappuccino. Coffee is chamar medina. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, thank you. Thank you for mentioning that. I think a nice coffee, like there's Chaim here, the kind of Chaim makes for me. Um, so, Zachar uh, Latoy. <laughs> I think I think the um, coffee, an iced coffee, something which is real, that's for sure a Kamar Medina. Everyone goes out to a coffee shop. There's cafes all over the world. And that's, by the way, I'm not talking about the nine days. I'm talking about all the time. Um, that being said, I usually make um, the, the, um, Yusachar, Yusachar. There's another little bit of Kabbalah in this also, that uh, there's some people are machmer on sweet by Habdallah, so you should have a sweet week. So um, so I have a personal minhag that I use dry wine because that's all I drink. But I put a drop, a drop of uh, grape juice into it, um, which is not going to hurt anybody. And I might, like I'm say that sweetness, so we should have the sweetness for the, for the wine. So um, I, I want to mention that being that I, let's, just following up on what I said before, that you're not obligated to have spots on your shirt or to be... Um, lactose intolerant and be sick the whole time. Bechlal, um, if somebody um, has to eat meat, or theoretically, if somebody needs to drink wine, that probably doesn't exist, but if somebody has to eat meat or flaschitz because they have, uh, they're anemic, or they're, you know, many, many pregnant women um, are told by their doctors or nutritionists to, to, to eat some meat. Um, unless you have another very good source of protein, it can be very, very important. And most people don't know enough about um, food, the food chart to, to get enough protein. So if, a, so if a, a, somebody's told by their doctor, this is not for you because you're pregnant or because you're nursing or because you're anemic or even an old person that just needs, to, needs that boost. I'm not a doctor um, and I'm not going to uh, give medical advice here. But I'm just saying, if somebody does have a medical issue, the chiddush that I had said to somebody today is that if, if a person is lactose intolerant, they don't have a medical issue which requires meat. They just have a medical issue which says don't drink milk or don't have dairy. So I took a bit of a, a jump on that one. And I said, well, then you're not eating the dairy. You're not eating rather the meat. Um, to, to, it's not a violation of the nisucha, of, of the, um, of the hakrovas carbon and the Beis HaMikdash. Uh, David, something else come to mind, David uh, Feinberg, that um, the, the poskim say, before, I just realized now that the Das Zekenim says Mefurish, who has a lot on the nine days, he says Mefurish, that chicken is mutter because it wasn't nikr, it was, wasn't nikr on the base, in the Beis HaMikdash. But since there was an oath, so it's, there was, it wasn't the majority, but there was such a thing as, a, as, as oaf in the base on Migdash. So that's why we're machmer on it. I just remembered that uh, that's the game. Are you still with me, um, David? Okay. Whatever. Everybody else can listen. Hey, thank you. Okay. Um, if there's anything that I missed here. Somebody asked me today about um, washing a shaitel. Shaitel's interesting, Machlok is a postkim. All the postkim like to talk about shaitels on the nine days. Um, the question is this Is it a beged or is it hair? Get it? <laughs> so if it's a beged, so then it's, a, it's, it's laundering. If it's hair, it's washing your hair. <laughs> so this, this is her hair. So um, I have here this little uh, kuntras that they put out from Rav Scheinberg and other posts came, but mostly from Rav Scheinberg. And I never heard this from him, but he says that he heard from Rav Scheinberg that you're allowed to wash your shaitel during the nine days. That's what he says. I'm not saying it a second, but that's what he says. He also said, Hu haya Omer, that um, being that you're allowed to um, being that you're allowed to wear clothes. Well, let me let me back up from from this for a second. It's it's in, in the Mishnah Bura for the those a lot of people here learn Mishnah Bura a lot. Um, I, I want to point out to you that in um, this is a kasha. I don't have the answer to this kasha, but in Tuf Kuf Nun Aleph, um, I believe it's Sifkat and Tess, the Mishnah Bura says that you're allowed to wear big day Shabbos for Shabbos Chazon, that would be this Shabbos, but you're not allowed to wear new. 
That's what he says. If you turn two pages in the Mishnah Bura to the Bir Alacha, he talks about kibbus, and he says, but for Shabbos, Chazon, you're allowed to wear even new. As far as I can see, this is a direct contradiction in the Mishnah Bura between what he writes in the Bir Alacha and what he writes in the Mishnah Bura. I don't know the answer to it, so um, I, I leave it to you guys to do it for homework. Um, it's Tuf Kuf Nun Aleph. I think it's Sivkat and Tes. You'll see it on the third wide line. Or in the Bir Alacha on the three page light on the right side. Um, you have this uh, steer in the Mishnah Bura, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I just discovered it today, by the way. The, uh, that being said, our Minhag um, is not to wear new, but to wear clean on Shabbos Chazon. Just like we take a shower for Shabbos Chazon, we wear clean clothes. What about polishing your shoes? Does anybody still do that? Polishing your shoes. So you're not allowed to polish your shoes during the nine days because tzich is considered a type of kavisa. But Rav Scheinberg told us that you're allowed to polish your shoes. So if you're a, a sh the shoe polishing type, um, so then... Um, which probably means you're over the age of 30 or whatever. So um, if you're a shoe polishing type, so then you can polish your shoes on Arab Shabbos uh, tomorrow. Oh, not tomorrow, but Friday. Some say during the nine days you can apply polish to your shoes, just not shine them. We were not macabre this psak. What about polishing your nails? Polishing your nails is, well, for it start earlier, you're allowed to cut your nails during the nine days. So um, I'm asking. <laughs> it was a question. No, I know you can't. But no. what happens if you have to? You can. You can. But don't, let's not skip. Why do you know you can't? Um, you can. You can cut your nails. First of all, machlokas haposkim whether it's natilas um, sipranaim is bchalaser, and our minhag is that you can cut your nails if they're bothering you. Um, so since you can cut your nails if they're bothering you, so. Um, like you can't just cut your nails to get a manicure. Um, the the minna Yisrael is not to manicure on Arab Shabbos Chazon unless you do it every Arab Shabbos. So if you do it every Arab Shabbos, then it's a chasarn and 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 Kabbat Shabbos, and you're allowed to do it. I personally do not do it every Arab Shabbos. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, it's 10 o'clock. Just, just to follow up on washing, uh, in this age of uh, COVID-19, I wouldn't suggest anybody not wash their hands and arms very well or even not shower if they work or happen to get caught in a crowd. Thank you. Thank you for mentioning that. Social distancing. You might want to comment. Yeah. Well, on the one hand, I do want to comment. Thank you for mentioning that. Thank you. On the one hand, um, the fact that we're so socially distancing um, makes the washing less pertinent. <laughs> so there, there are. Uh, there was a posik that I was talking to today who said, "Well, you know, you know, the whole re the whole reason why you have to shower so much." Is because we're in society, but everybody's in a little capsule, so it's not such a problem. Um, I don't think that that's exactly correct. I saw, um, I didn't see, I take it back. Somebody told me today of Sakhar of Schechter um, Schlitte in New York, who he says that uh, even on Tisha B'Av, you're allowed to wash your hands and certainly use aqua gel. Um, and a, a providing, and, and by the way, what he's saying is once he says it, it's posh. Like, because you're not doing it for any type of rechitza. You're doing it to get rid of something which is um, which is lichluch, and it's worse than lichluch because lichluch is dirty, it doesn't look nice, it's uncomfortable. This you can actually um, get sick and make other people sick. So uh, Rav Shachter said that if you wa haven't been washing your hands regularly, you can't start on Tisha B'Av. The rest of us can. Okay, so I would like to be machmer on that. And say that you should wash your hands. Um, and if you haven't been doing it regularly, do it regularly. They, 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 they um, look. I said this at the beginning of this uh, shear, that uh, the nine days is a time of sakana. So, so you know, this is not the time to to play with fire. Um, if it's for a mitzvah, it's for a mitzvah. So, um, if you feel safe, come to shul. Um, our shul is a safe place. 
Baruch Hashem. We're very, very careful. But not to wash your hands is stupid. <laughs> it's, just, it's just downright stupid. It doesn't, it doesn't have any seichel to it at all. Um, you, you could also wear a, a clean mask. Um, somebody asked me today. So I'm glad you mentioned, uh, Harold, the, um, you know, the washing of hands. That's a very important thing. Okay, it's, uh, I don't want to hold anybody up. It's after 10. Um, does, does anybody have any questions? I'm happy to try to answer. Rabbi, very quickly, Friday week, after Tisha B'Av, are we allowed to shave before Shabbos? Let's talk about Hilchus Tisha B'Av next, next time. I'm, I'm okay. carefully staying away from Wait, it. Wait, I have a question. If you have reusable masks, are you allowed to wash them in the 90s? Yes. Okay, thank you. Sure. Why is that? Children who want to do act, creative activities um, on Shabbos, what, or on, or on the way, like knitting, making hats, things like that, is it allowed? Well, well first of all, honest. I mean, you know, a bunch of people ask me this today. What's wrong with creative activities? There's nothing wrong with creative activities. Um, they're creating clothes. If they're oh, but if they're creating clothes, it's us, sir. So you can't do sewing and you can't do knitting. So that's the yeah, wrong that's that's the, the wrong thing to do. Under bar mitzvah for enjoyment. From nine years old up. If you have a lot of dirty towels, I asked you before, is it mutter to wash them and not to use them? Look, um, it's already Rosh Chodesh. No, you can't wash. Uh, this is an Isser Kibos. But I did want to say that um, this is a halacha that you're only Megala once Rosh Chodesh comes. That if you didn't have a chance to put on all your different shirts and, and use all your towels and everything today, so um, the post can all say, uh, now you're stuck. So what you do is just... Um, do something with it, like take the freshness out of it. What, what I think to do is like if you put it on the floor, um, or you, you know, just, just you know, just exp it's not fresh, you know. So that's the avid what you're allowed to do during the nine days, and that's what you got to do with your towels and your um, and your sheets and things like that. If you want to use them, um, you don't have to make them dirty. You just have to take the freshness out of it. Why is it that with all these things, all these menagia uh, avilus, we say they don't apply for Shabbos? But then when it comes to shaving, that doesn't seem to be the minute. We don't shave for Shabbos. Right, because uh, shaving, um, first of all, I think there are posts that say they can shave for Shabbos um, because it's for, if it's for a mitzvah. But the truth of the matter is, um, the, you know, the, the bearded postkin of the last 2,000 years um, couldn't see the idea of shaving. But there's a different, there's a different, um, there's a whole different Kabbalistic Thing with shaving that um, it's not for me to go into, or I don't even know if I understand it, but there's a whole different um, piece of the shaving thing, um, and haircuts for that matter, which is ma'ur dinim, and um, that's why if it's not really vital for parnosa, um, or if you're not seriously, seriously uncomfortable, um, it brings out a mitas hadin, and the last thing we need here is a mitas hadin. And also, really? I, I want to say I'm one sorry. more thing about the shaving. I just want to say one more thing. That Lamaisa, um, you know, being un unshaven is one of the last um, one of the last remnants of 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 dressing and acting and showing yourself like a mourner. Like that's like you know unshaven. You know, like it's it's one of the last things. So I, I I'm I feel very I feel very strongly about this. That you know we 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 figured out ways to take showers and we figured out ways to put on new clothes and we figured out ways to even build our um, our houses um you know like when you look at somebody who's going through a lot of tsar they're always unshaven who could think of shaving when you're going through tsar um uh, you know that's that's sort of like the minic of the whole world and i think that's something that we should try to keep so besides for the kabbalistic part of it um i just think that it's the right thing it's the right thing if you shave to just have that one simon of avelos that, that we can have. It reminds me a little bit, and let me just, uh, you know, of music. Music, api alacha, is, is us or all the time. Happy music, fancy music, unless it's the Sameh, Chas, and Bekala, it's, it's us or. But um, we stopped making it us or because we're, you know, we're a downtrodden people. We've gone through pogroms, we've gone through a holocaust, we're going through um, stuff now. So if the music cheers you up, cheers you up. Or Moshe says, that um, that kind of happy music that makes you dance. For Marcia says that music is really us, sir, but we're makele in it. But maybe at least during the nine days and the three weeks, we should we should make that simon of avelos. So it's like an interesting, very subtle idea of a simon of avelos. Like you should do something which is a simon of avelos. You're not wearing black ribbons, you know. So do a simon of avelos, and that's just to be a little unshaven 
and tone down the music. And I would, I strongly suggest to everybody, um, as people that they're all like Yirei Hashem, um, don't look for kulas in this area. Istinus is istinus, but don't look for kulas in this area. Okay, I hope this was helpful. And uh, one quick question. Yes. Just, you, you, there, I learned that there's a minhag to sing the uh, the Lachadah deed to the tune of uh, Alitzion. Yes, we do that so, in our show. What, you, what is that? What is the tune? Alitzion. Ah, okay, thank you. So um, it's not Chayev. <laughs> Uh, you know, guys, I'm so worried about Tisha B'Av because Tisha B'Av, um, Baruch Hashem, in our shul, I'm not supposed to say that it makes me happy, but um, I, I find Tisha B'Av to be a very uplifting time. I'm going through the kinos with the whole tzibur and uh, Baruch Hashem, you know, usually we have a couple hundred people in shul and throughout the day maybe another thousand people are online. Um, and... It's going to be. I don't know what's going to be. I don't know what's going to be Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, but right now I'm thinking on Tisha B'Av. So um, I don't know what's going to be, but let's. I, I think that Hashem was Geyser, you know, at least at least give it some extra attention. Right? If you can be in the shul, so be in the shul. If you can be online, be online. Obviously, everybody here has online connection. But uh, spend the morning, uh, you know, spend the morning in Kinos and Tolchat Zos. Don't, don't be mavater on it. Uh, it's, it's such a beautiful thing. I'm missing the beauty of, of Tisha B'Av and the learning of Tisha B'Av. I personally will, one way or the other, be learning the whole Tisha B'Av, the whole Kinos um, um, online, and they're going to start right after that, whether I'm in Shul or whether I'm at home, me Odea. But uh, we will do it, and it will be online, and um, I, I really urge everybody to, um, might be a good way for people even that don't usually come, they just say Kinos, but maybe if they can't go to Shul, it's a good thing to join, and uh, thanks to Yossi, who's putting together the program. Question, Rabbi. Um, question, Rabbi. Yeah. Uh, about Tisha B'Av. Is it possible to maybe do a, is it allowed, um, Echa on Zoom or something, that sure. we could hear it, who's not going to show? Yes. We're going we're gonna to do something. I, I'm not sure. Um, either online or on the porch. How about that? Echa. Okay, fine. Echa. I'll just go out on my mirror pesach. Echa, echa on the porch. Um, we're going to do something. And, there was, we're, and, and the main thing is, let me end with this, that um, Zechariah Hanavi, Zechariah Hanavi said that this particular fast is going to, Tisha B'Av, will, uh, with, with the Geula, become a yuntiv, Meaning, not only... Well, it'll not be a Tisha B'Av, and we won't have to mourn, but it'll actually become a Yontiv. It'll become a day of celebration. And instead of learning now Hilchas Tisha B'Av and Avelos, we would be learning Hilchas Yontiv. Um, that's what we would be spending time doing right now. Like we would do before Pesach and before Purim, and like we do so many times. So we should be Zolcha to have, um, like Zechariah Navi said, we should be Mispalo that his Navua should come true. The, the gula does not take a long time necessarily, and uh, let it be a yunt of this year, and then just delete this video. Okay. Arab. Thank you very Arab, much. Arab Tov. Good night. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Thank you.